Hi, I'm Susan Kellner of the Ontario Pesticide Education Program and I'm going to go through the Chapter 9 Pesticide Poisonings Chapter of the Grower Pesticide Safety Course Manual with you. There are about 17 slides in this presentation so it will take us about 10 minutes to review. So uh, let's get going. What will I learn? By the end of this lesson, you should be ready to explain the four ways that pesticides can enter your body, routes of exposure, list ways to prevent pesticide poisonings, list the symptoms of pesticide poisoning, and state when to ask your doctor for cholinesterase testing. Pesticide poisonings can happen. Poisonings often happen to young children. And here is an example where pesticides were not stored safely and a child was been able to get access to them. So roots of exposure can enter your body uh, in four ways. Uh, the mouth is oral exposure, swallowing, ingestion. Lungs, we're talking about inhalation exposure, respiratory exposure, breathing in the pesticide. For skin, it's dermal exposure, absorbing into the skin, and eyes, ocular exposure. So first, through the mouth, oral exposure is swallowing or ingesting. Your mouth, stomach, and intestines will absorb pesticides very quickly. Pesticides can enter your body through your mouth if you wipe your mouth on a sleeve or a glove, accidentally drink leftover pesticides that are stored in drink or food containers such as water bottles, smoke or eat during or after using a pesticide and before washing, or eat food that has was recently treated with pesticides. Splash pesticides in your mouth is another way. Prevent exposure through your mouth. Don't store leftover pesticides in food or drink containers. Don't use your mouth to siphon pesticide liquids or to clean nozzles. Wash before you eat or drink. Use a face shield to protect your face from splashes. Lungs, inhalation exposure, inhalation, respiratory, breathing in. Once pesticides reach the lungs, they are absorbed easily since the surface of the lung is a very thin membrane. If you have, you have a greater chance of inhaling pesticides when you work in close spaces such as greenhouses, mushroom houses, barns, and with fumigants or suspensions in air or volatile pesticides. Prevent exposure to your lungs. Wear a respirator. Choose the right one for the job. Make sure that it fits. Clean and maintain it. And information about this is in the protective clothing and personal protective equipment chapter. Skin and eyes, dermal and ocular, ocular exposure. This is the most common type of exposure. Your body will absorb pesticides more easily when your skin has cuts or scrapes, your skin is moist or sweating, and the pesticide is a type that enters through the skin easily. The longer the pesticide stays on your skin, the more likely it will enter into the skin. So prevent exposure to your eyes. Eyes absorb pesticides quickly. The special warnings for eye hazards will be on the front of the pesticide label, so watch for danger corrosive to eyes, danger eye irritant, warning eye irritant, caution eye irritant, wear goggles or a face shield to protect your eyes. So prevent exposure to your skin and eyes. Wear clean clothes each day. Keep plenty of gloves available. Wash your hands before you use the toilet, eat, drink, or smoke. Shower right away if you spill pesticide on yourself and keep all equipment clean and in good repair. Restricted entry intervals. You remember that from chapter three. Do not enter, allow other workers to enter into treated areas during the restricted entry interval. Tell workers and others of the restricted entry intervals. One way to do this is to post signs, such as the example shown at the main ways into the treated area. Keep information about each application in a central location where information can be easily read by workers. And you can get those signs from the Ontario Pesticide Education Program by contacting us. Question, it's a hot, humid day and you are working with pesticides. 
These weather conditions increase your risk for exposure through which route? The mouth, skin, or lungs? It's a hot, humid day and you are working with pesticides. These weather conditions increase your risk for exposure through which route? And the answer? Skin. Sweaty skin absorbs pesticides easily. You may wipe your face with your sleeve or a glove. Learn the symptoms of pesticide poisoning. Mild symptoms, moderate symptoms, and severe symptoms. Many of them look just like other illnesses. So you have to be cognizant of the fact that you actually were working with pesticides and could have been poisoned. Mild symptoms can get worse. So get medical help if you're not feeling well. Cholinesterase inhibitors. There are two types of insecticides that affect the cholinesterase level in your blood, organophosphates and carbamates. Organophosphates, chlorpyrifos, diazon, diazonon, malathion, carbamates, carbaryl, methamyl. If you use these types of insecticides, you can ask your doctor for a blood test to monitor exposure. So it's a special test. You would have to make your doctor aware of you uh, using these products over the growing season and that uh, you would need a blood test. Ask your doctor to monitor your exposure. So if they have a baseline test for this, later on in the season as you use the products, you can go in and then get your blood tested at intervals. If blood tests show a lower cholesterol level, stop working with insecticides until your level returns to your baseline or normal level. And that baseline level would be different for everybody. So uh, that's why it's important for you to get that baseline normal level for yourself. Check your handling procedures and protective equipment. Don't handle again until your cholinesterase level is back to normal. Remember, whenever you visit your doctor, tell your doctor that you work with pesticides. And that is the chapter nine, pesticide poisonings.